Hi, welcome back to Blank Stage Theater and to Thrive America. And we just had a, uh, a really great session here with Stone. And Stone, we're going to jump right into innovation. And I know and I've seen you talk a lot about innovation. So what do you mean uh, by innovation in, in, in your world? Well, thanks for letting me talk about it. It's one of my favorite topics. I was on a radio interview a couple of weeks ago, and a guy referred to me as an innovation guru. And I had to uh, tell him very quickly that I'm not. I, uh, I've uh, invested a lot of my career standing on the shoulders of other people. <laughs> and uh, one set of shoulders that I've stood over, uh, on top of very recently is a gentleman by the name of Jatin Desai. And in following his work, I've just gotten, just become so enamored with this whole idea of innovation and really innovation execution. And that is the capacity to take ideas um, from inception all the way to marketplace. So when I use the term innovation, that's really what I'm talking about. And having the benefit of the relationship with the side group has put me in a position to, to bring those messages and then bring the tactical resources uh, to bear to, to, to bring those fruits to labor. And I'm just, I'm having a ball with it. I, I've heard a lot of people say that you got to be original. You can, you can have your, you can perfect the way your message is, and you can have great customer service, and you can have all these really great elements to have a successful business. But what are you doing to stand out? What are you doing to be original, and and so forth? So that's I can see why you're so excited about something like this and bringing a breath of fresh air into the fabric of a company using using this concept of innovation. Um, some of the trends you're seeing in the marketplace as it as it pertains. Uh, to innovation and bringing out uh, creative messaging and so forth? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot, and I'm using some different vehicles to sort of keep my finger on the pulse of those trends. One is uh, I'm spending a, a great deal more energy now in monitoring all of the dialogue through all these social media outlets. There's a tremendous amount of buzz and genuine substantive conversation around innovation. And then um, I also have been, uh, we started hosting a radio show, the High Velocity Radio Show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that show, what we decided to do was start interviewing people in the trenches, executives. And we also interview thought leaders, speakers, and consultants. But we interview uh, executives inside organizations that are getting the real work of innovation done. And to hear them share their story and some of the things that they're executing, that's a lot of fun, and it puts us just right there in the thick of, of all of that information. Then we like to turn around and, and distribute it. So you see a lot of trends. Uh, I guess probably the, the most prevalent that I see is a great deal more attention to the idea and uh, just the concept of, of innovation. People are really, uh, like me, getting very enamored with it. Um, now, I will say along with that, at the very senior executive level, the, the initial response seems to be to turn around to the mid-level or second tier and say, go find out about this innovation stuff or go get us a creativity course or um, you know, let's have some guy come in and talk to us about innovation, which is one of the reasons that I get to, mm -hmm. get to hear about it. So I, I see that trend, but I also see um, sectors in, 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 a, in a couple of different industry sectors where they're really, they're either hurting now or they have enough foresight to see around the corner and recognize mm -hmm. if they don't begin creating new value and genuinely shift the way that they approach and serve their market, um, they're going to get their hind ends handed to them on a stick. And so I guess in, in that, in that uh, mid-level management and through the rank and file, you've got some people that are becoming quite serious about mm -hmm. the capacity to, to, to innovate and create new value and bring that value to their customer more than ever before. So so let me see. I'm still a little hazy about innovation. In other words, what I think, what I think I hear you're saying is that y you help create innovative ways that a company might have a dialogue, or might communicate their message to companies. And then, uh, if, if I'm clear on that, let me know. And then, and what's the difference between that and creativity? Well, it's an insightful question, and that's the exact right segue to go with because. Um, and hazy is a good way to characterize it. There is a great deal of confusion in the marketplace, uh, we find, in, in the lexicon, just in terms like innovation versus uh, creativity. And innovation certainly starts with creativity, but innovation is something more. It's, uh, well, my VP, Dan Brown, the, the vice president of uh, marketing at the Desai Group, characterized it this way. He said, innovation is creativity with a job to do. Hmm. And that job is to create value for the organization. 
And so there really are a great deal of uh, organizations and individual thought leaders in the marketplace that are just doing some marvelous work to and providing great tools for generating new ideas, harvesting more I ideas, and, 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 and uh, equipping individuals and teams to be more creative. Where uh, our work seems to gravitate more toward is establishing the methodology governance infrastructure to, to take those ideas from inception all the way to marketplace and, and um, put into place the kinds of metrics that you need and the ability to monitor progress and be able to evaluate you know, what is now an, an ever-growing uh, number of ideas, evaluate them against some very specific criteria. So we'll go in, we'll help organizations establish an innovation mandate, make sure that that is wholly consistent with the overarching strategic direction of the organization, and then apply that rigor and that discipline so that, so that they can bring those ideas, so that it really does become creativity commercialized and, genu and generate real value. So that's the little corner of the sandbox I think we've carved out for ourselves pretty successfully. And I'm sure there's probably some fear in some of these brick and mortar type of companies that are, that are there and the senior executives who, who are like, uh, nervous about any kind of shift or change but I, in the next question I want you to be specific how can you what advice do you have to someone like me as a smaller company a business owner uh, to be more to be more innovative and apply some of these principles are there books to read are there exercises uh, how, how can you be specific in, in answering that uh, question I don't know what do you think <laughs> now, here's what I mean by that mm -hmm. I really believe, and I don't care if it's a multi-billion dollar organization or if it's you and your wayward nephew selling collard greens and boiled peanuts on the highway, mm -hmm. that those are the seven most powerful words that a leader can use. And if you can exercise the discipline to have that kind of mindset and really place the onus of generating ideas and, and bringing them to fruition mm -hmm. on the people that you're working with, the, the, the people that report to you, and ask questions like, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, that has such tremendous power. And part B of that, I guess day two of a two-day training course on that, is, oh yeah, stop and listen to the answer. Because often they really do have some good ones. So that's one piece of advice, mm -hmm. is let go and, and let your people do what they, what they can do. And I guess that's uh, very closely akin to this other idea particularly senior level executives, and, I, and I, I'll just apologize up front if I offend someone, my most uh, consistent piece of advice to senior level executives, get out of the way. Just get out of the way and let these people do what they are dying to do. You will see so much. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, I talked to her earlier about this idea of discretionary effort. You will see so much discretionary effort bubble to the top if you will get out of the way Ask things like, I don't know, what, what do you think? And then the, the third piece of advice, and this is just absolutely critical in my opinion, Brent, you've, you've got to give your employees, you've got to give the, your, your culture uh, a place to put the fruits of their creative labor to work. Mm -hmm. um, and an example that comes to mind for me, uh, this past uh, Christmas, my brother's kids got mini bikes mm. for Christmas. Well, he lives on three acres. I live on a postage stamp in Cobb County. One of the cruelest things I could have done to my kids is, have, is give them mini bikes for Christmas. But you know, sometimes I see that in organizations. They, they, they get uh, kind of enamored with this idea of innovation. They read an article, they hear me do a, a talk or, or something. And so they go out and they invest in uh, a creativity course or buy the latest gadget or mind mapping software. But then if there's nowhere to actually apply that, if there's nowhere to ride their mini bikes, you're going to end up with a very frustrated workforce, and what you're not going to have is any genuine return on your investment. So mm -hmm. th those are three uh, specific pieces of advice I would, I would share with anyone. Gotcha. So uh, the, the, the point that Stone, Stone's making is how can, uh, how can we encourage the people that we come up with, if you don't have, have, <clears throat> have a team, maybe find some mentors. We've had other guests that talk about, you know, the mentors will come into the fabric of your, of your company and, and get input and really listen to, to what they have to say. Stone, we're going to bring you right back and we're going to talk about change. So I'm excited to hear you talk about that. All right.